I want to start uh, with something that you need to know about. You know, my job, I feel like, is uh, somebody that is just telling you the mile markers as we go. We are hitting another mile marker here that you really need to pay attention to because it is all about information. Um, We have been witnessing a very disturbing trend in social media lately. The giants of Silicon Valley are attempting to control the narrative and dictate what information you have access to by punishing people like me or perhaps like you for wrong think. Now, this is a blatant uh, assault on your freedom of speech and my freedom of speech. And what do you know? They've decided to do this during an election year. (laughs) I mean, what a coincidence. So I have three updates for you, and the actual, the first one is actually kind of a win. I shared last week when my team discovered that Apple had rated everything in my Apple podcast library as explicit content. That's over 2,000 episodes of my radio program, uh, which I am FCC regulated, so I can't have anything explicit on, uh, and also the Glenn Beck podcast. Now... The key here is why did Apple change the rating from clean to explicit? Well, my team uploads the the episodes to the Apple podcast platform, and they have to rate it either clean or explicit. Vast majority of my episodes fall under the clean category, but our standards are a little higher than everyone else. Every so often, a guest on my podcast has used colorful language, They'll drop, you know, the F-bomb occasionally. It's happened maybe twice. And my, t- my team, trying to make sure that we understand our audience, uh, has flagged those episodes as explicit. That shouldn't affect every episode. It should affect that episode. So we reached out to Apple for comment, and Apple got back to us right away and claimed this was due to four episodes that we in the 2000s have labeled explicit. Now, Apple claimed that we didn't say they were explicit. I know we did. Apple wanted me to delete those episodes to get the label removed from all the rest of the 2,000 episodes. Uh So censorship? Well, I don't know. There's people that use content settings to avoid podcasts that are entirely based around explicit content like pornography. What Apple did was group my show with those kinds of shows to hide all of my shows from you. We pushed back. Yesterday, we got a notification that Apple will remove the explicit label within a couple of business days. I mean, we got a lot going on here. So it was a big misunderstanding, as it always is, and time and time again. And I just love the fact that they, they will take a couple of days and correct this right away. Now, this is called soft censorship, and these attempts happen all the time. Let me give you another example. Earlier this week, I got a notification that Facebook is making shadow banning company policy. Now, shadow banning, in case you don't know, is when a social media company allows you to post all the content that you want, but then it limits the reach that the content can uh, hit. So, It's, uh, well, I call it the digital ghetto. You know, they're just rounding everybody up that disagrees uh, with the government, and they just put them in this little digital ghetto. There's a wall around it. Well, they can speak all they want, but nobody's going to hear them, okay? Unless you, too, go into the ghetto. Now, this time, at least Facebook was kind enough to tell us about it. They posted an article last week called Our Approach to Political Content. Now, Facebook admitted now that they are going to shadow ban all political content. But that's for you. That has nothing to do with, like, the WEF saying, we've got to silence people. We've got to make sure that people aren't misinformed with things that disagree with our policy and our direction. Now, Facebook argued that, quote, the people have told us they just want to see less political content. So we've spent the last few years refining our approach on Facebook to reduce the amount of political content, including from politician accounts. You see in feeds, reels, watch groups, you should join, and pages you may like. Okay, that's interesting. 
because my t- my team started noticing oh a ninety five percent drop in our penetration on Facebook about a year ago, uh, which, which is weird, which is weird. <sighs> but it'll be better for our sanity, I guess. I remember a time when Facebook begged me to join their platform. So what changed? Well, an election year where they're scared out of their mind and they have to silence anyone that is telling you a different opinion than the overlords. I'd like to know what Facebook considers to be political content. Is advertising LGBTQ issues to kids considered political? I bet not. How about content on the benefits of abortion? Is that political? Does Joe Biden get a pass since he's the president, despite the fact that he's running for re-election? Or is it just the right-wing candidates and issues that are from the right wing that are considered political? Don't worry, Facebook isn't banning all political content. Instead, it's just hiding it by default. If you want to see the political content, then you can customize your feed preference and turn it back on. Mm Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. You can also add people like me to your favorites list so you can still see my content in your feed. Sounds great and easy, doesn't it? Okay, so in the episode I did a couple of weeks ago, I introduced you to a group that's called the Center for Countering Digital Hate. When I say they are the ones behind the infamous disinformation dozen report that the White House peddled back in 2021, uh, that report targeted so-called COVID disinformation. All the things that we now know are true. Well, they now have a new report out about climate disinformation, but not the kind you might be thinking of. Now, when I say they, I really mean him, because there is only one employee at this nonprofit. Earlier this year, a British outlet called The Independent highlighted this new report. Apparently, it's the Center for Countering Digital Hate, and they are furious that social media companies are allowing a new form of climate change denial to spread to their platforms. It's no longer good enough for companies like YouTube to censor people who believe in climate change uh, or believe that it is fake. Um, They've been doing that, but that's not enough. That's the old kind of denial. The Center for Digital Hate defined the new denial as anything that claims global heating is beneficial or harmless, that global elites' climate solutions may not work, or that so-called climate science or the climate movement can't be trusted. Now, I'm not sure how questioning the global elites is a form of digital hate, but apparently now it is, because that guy at the CCDH has spoken. And the White House will partner with him. So now, people like me, who have never denied that the climate is changing, in fact, I say the climate has always been changing, we're considered spreaders of hateful disinformation because we think like uh, things like reimagining farming might kill millions of people. You know, like it has every time it has ever been attempted uh, in the past. Now, the CCDH made sure to specifically call me and Blaze TV out as spreaders of this new denial. Now, this isn't just pointing the finger. This was a threat because the CCDH then demanded that YouTube demonetize any content that spreads new denial. But remember, this is one of the White House's go-to experts on disinformation. It's a good thing the White House doesn't have a track record of telling social media companies who to censor, right? Oh, wait, we just learned in the Twitter files, that's exactly what they've been doing for years. So let's take a step back here, because it's more important for you to understand what the CCDH's demand actually means. Stu, do I still have your attention? Because this is really complex, but I just want to make sure people really understand it. Can you... I don't know, do something that would bring in, you know, the people that don't have a real big attention span. Taylor Swift, she's in the, she's in the luxury box watching the radio show today. Look at okay, her. Okay, good, thank you. There you go. Okay, so here it is. They want YouTube to limit the monetization of any content that goes against the global elite's narrative. And if I, in general, are against the global elite's narrative then you wouldn't want any of my content 
monetized. The truth is, it's not really cheap or easy to produce content and maintain a team to keep all of the trains running on time. A subscription model is the best way for us to function, and that's something that uh, we pioneered here at The Blaze. I knew working at CNN and then at Fox, we could not relay, rely on other companies. We couldn't rely on advertisers. We had to rely on you. Now, we take advertisers because it's wildly expensive to do what we do, but in the end, we'll continue to do it as long as you are a subscriber. That's why I ask you all the time, please subscribe to The Blaze because I know what is coming. In fact, it's already here. We only answer to you. So this, I'm going to show you some of this so you understand what it is. But anyone who is, is relying on making their money from social media is going to be over soon. So they want YouTube to limit the monetization of anybody that is going against the global elite's narratives. It is important for people to be able to reach new viewers through platforms like YouTube and Facebook. Otherwise, we're only speaking to the choir. How do you offset the cost for content when you're putting it out for free? Well, YouTube shares the revenue that they take to run ads in our content. The better the video does, the more ads are sold, the more money both YouTube and, let's say, somebody like me makes. That's how it works. But late last week, one of my producers was looking through the YouTube analytics on my podcast with the rancher Shad Sullivan. The episode is called Millions Will Starve. Rancher sounds the alarm on the global food agenda. It was performing extraordinarily well. In just, I think, a day, it had 320,000 views. It had amassed a watch time of over 88,000 hours. Okay? That, if we cared about the money, should have made tons of money for the Blaze or for the Glenn Beck program. The, the podcast had 14 YouTube ad breaks. So... They were selling advertisers, but we weren't making any money. So we don't know what happened to the money there. We were searching for a potential problem. We found a, first, a few things. First of all, YouTube had limited ads on this video, which can take it to, you know, every thousand people, or I, I don't even know the numbers, but um, it, uh, it, you get a certain amount for every, everybody who's watching all of this, and then you split it. But if you are banned in any way, then that number goes down. Well, YouTube had limited ads on this video. They claimed that it had firearms-related content that wasn't friendly to some advertisers. We double-checked. We, we didn't talk at all about firearms. Nothing would have triggered this restriction. Ah... Uh... But there is a catch to this, and it will show you next exactly what's coming to everyone. If you don't know the mile marker, you're not going to know where you are. And where you are is heading deeper and deeper into a place where your navigation system is being fiddled with. I urge you, if you are not a member of the Blaze, please support us. Join us at blazetv.com slash Glenn. Um, use the um, the promo code free speech, and uh, you can get thirty dollars off uh, of your uh, subscription. That includes everything Blaze uh, Media is doing now, <clears throat> not only in video content and opinion content, but also there are two big stories that I want to get to. Um, the uh, Blaze has just in investigated how many people actually died of COVID nineteen in the Michigan long-term care facilities. That's a breaking story. Also, Capitol Police, we've just found, and we are showing you now um, footage that has never been seen before. Capitol Police diverted all of the CCTV cameras away from the DNC pipe bomb investigation, except one, and we will show you that video that has been like pulling teeth to get it in just a few. 